Bibliophiles of the internet, my name's Adriana and today I'm back to give you five reasons to read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is Own Voices Latinx fiction, which honestly should be reason number one itself to pick up this book. It's about Xiomara Bautista, a Dominican-American girl living in Harlem, and ever since she began high school, she's learned to toughen up and show the world this unapologetically fierce exterior. She's trying to figure out who she is and what she wants, but it's hard to do that when you've been taught that you're a creature of sin whose very existence begs forgiveness, and that's the kind of thinking she's up against with her mother, who is a devout Catholic. Who girl, I know a couple of those. Xiomara begins writing and she's invited to join the school's poetry club. The problem is that they meet at the exact same time as confirmation classes and Xiomara's mom would kill her if she ever found out. But deep down Xiomara knows this is the only way she's gonna find her true voice and the only thing worse than living in a world where no one hears you is willingly staying silent. I just wanna say before we get into this, if you wanna read this book, if you are able, you must listen to the audiobook which is narrated by the author herself. And Elizabeth Acevedo has mad background as a slam poet, so the entire production is fantastic. First reason to read this book, it's written in verse, and more importantly, the form works. As I said, Elizabeth Acevedo is a poet first and foremost, and she knows how to weave narrative voice through these poems and how to shape these verses so that they have the greatest possible impact. The format makes what could have otherwise been a slow burn, sleepy story into something hard hitting, fast paced, almost desperate, and you're immediately engaged from the very first page. Plus, if you often struggle with darkly emotional contemporary books, the format makes the story that much easier and faster to process. It also works because poetry bespeaks a kind of intimacy and closeness that we don't often get to see in traditional narration. Poetry brings a kind of focus to the page and allows the writer to hone in on only the most important details and characteristics, which is why this book balances form and narrative content so well. You really feel like you're being let into the hidden parts of Xiomara's heart. You're accessing all this raw imagery, and I'm not sure that kind of intimacy would have been possible if the book had been written any other way. And furthermore, the format creates a really thoughtful parallel between prayer and poetry, how they're both things to recite, mediums of strength, purpose, and focus. So I think the form really works on that level as well. Number two, the way the story approaches grappling with religion is extremely realistic and honest. This story definitely explores what so many Latinx American teens experience in terms of religion, especially because the story is happening at a crucial juncture in Xiomara's life. Life, confirmation. If you don't know, symbolically confirmation is a sacrament that represents a young person willingly accepting God into their life. There's baptism when you're young, but that's your parents basically submitting your name to the Catholic Church and accepting God on your behalf. Confirmation is supposed to be that full circle moment. Again, symbolically, it's supposed to be a really meaningful moment when a person decides for themselves that they accept God and they will continue to be Catholic, but it often doesn't pan out that way. For many Latinx youth, myself included, confirmation represents forced expectations. A choice that is supposed to be yours isn't really yours because typically your God-fearing parents will say, you are getting confirmed or you're no child of mine. As Yomara's mom says, I will feed and clothe no heathens. It gets especially touchy because for many people, religion is very closely tied up in culture. Worshipping is a cultural experience and something that creates a distinction between larger American culture and say Latinx American culture, among many others. Xiomara's conflict with religion, the way she sees its teachings is obviously hypocritical in conversation with her life and her experiences, her indifference to the ceremony of it all is something I've never seen before, and I relate. She goes there, she talks about how women especially are vilified in biblical biblical teachings, how young girls are taught that they're predisposed to sin or to making others sin, and what do you do with that? What do you do with this ingrained understanding that you're this shameful, graceless thing that always, always needs to be asking forgiveness, just for feeling things? There's even a moment where Xiomara starts her period and she doesn't know what to do, so she gets a tampon, she freaks out, and then she goes to ask her mom for help, and her mom yells at her because any tonta knows that using tampons compromises your virginity. I'm pretty sure that scene was taken from my own life. Xiomara's twin brother is also gay, so that's another quote-unquote shameful existence that her family will eventually have to face. So you see the conflict, you see how it can be useful to have something to believe in, to have someone to turn to, but you also see how those traditional ideas get tied up in culture and family norms and how they don't really fit and work in a modern context as is. Number three, the story incorporates Spanish, and none of it is in italics. This is like such a small detail, but it's also a huge freaking deal. POC authors have been talking about this for years. It's kind of demeaning when a book incorporates a non-English language and then italicizes those words and phrases because visually it signals something different from the quote-unquote normal text. 
it denotes otherness. And especially when I read books about Latinx characters, it makes me stop and think, wait, that's a part of my life. That's a part of my family. Why should it look like it doesn't belong? Like it's some kind of interruption, like it's something pointedly different. The blending of languages is extremely important in this story because just like everything else, language is so tied up in our beliefs, in our cultures, in our lifestyles. So to see Spanish portrayed as it is, to see it be respected on the page and presented just like everything else means a lot. Number four, the story beautifully explores what it means to tear down your walls and be strong enough to love yourself. Like I said before, the story confronts all these ingrained ideologies that we grow up with and how those things can eventually become barriers in our lives. They can become things we have to work through in order to fully understand ourselves. Ziomara has all these layers she has to understand about herself. She's Dominican, she's American, she's Catholic, she's a woman, and she has to figure out how all these things work together in a way that makes sense for her life. Especially as a young woman of color, it's hard to tune out all these voices, all these institutions telling you what you should be, what you should care about, what you should prioritize, what you should believe, and how you should believe it. Ziomara is realizing that she can't wait for other people to approve her existence. She's been taught to seek validation, respect, and forgiveness from all these people and things that tell her she's not worth loving, she's not worth hearing, and it's time for her to realize that she is worthy of being understood, she is worthy of love. It's frightening to pick apart your life or to realize that you don't fit into these expectations that were put upon you, but it takes strength to knock down your own walls and to take it upon yourself to love what you find. And number five, the story is all about discovering your own agency, finding your voice, and not being afraid to use it when it counts. In this book, there is darkness, there is desperation, confusion, anger, there is pain, but ultimately the story is so healing and cathartic. And I think it all goes back to how Ziomara is beginning to write. She's beginning to find herself as a poet, and again, because she's discovering that part of herself at this crucial juncture in her life, it takes a lot of nerve. Poetry is such a great vehicle for this narrative and for this character because when you're a poet, you have to quiet the world and turn your lens inwards to ask yourself, what kind of perspective do I have to offer the world? Poems are as old as the world itself, one of the most ancient forms of storytelling and self-expression because of their inviting form, their familiarity, and most importantly, they're meant to be performed. They're meant to be shared with others. So it's not just about Ziomara writing down her innermost thoughts, it's about her honing in on her voice, finding ways to express herself that makes sense, arranged in such a way that it lands with her audience, with the people she's trying to reach the most. Being a poet means sharing pieces of yourself with the world, offering yourself up for judgment, and it also means when push comes to shove, you're ready to speak those words out loud. That's powerful, and it takes a lot to get there, which is why it's so satisfying to see Ziomara pick herself up again and again and refuse to be silent, because that's how she's gonna fight. Overall, this is an incredible book in the way it's written, constructed, performed, and it would be miss to sleep on it when there's every reason to read it. So there you have it. There's your incentive to go out and read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. If you've read this one already or if you would like to do so in the future, as always, I encourage you to stop by the comments and let me know what you think. But that is everything I have for this review slash recommendation today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!